Section 7.6, Metals, Nonmetals, and Metalloids. Metallic character refers to the extent which an element exhibits the physical and chemical properties of metals. So how much more like a metal is it? So not all metals are, some metals are more metal than other metals. Maybe you could say it that way. Or something could be more metallic than an other. So usually metallic increases in metallic character as it goes down. So the francine would be more metallic than, say, lithium. And also things on the left side of the periodic table is more of a, me a metal, and things on the right side is more of a non-metal. So most of the periodic table are metals. So all the way down from aluminum through tin and bismuth and polonium, all of these guys are metals. All these are inner transition metals. And these are the transition metals. So the ones that are not metals are the green. So hydrogen plus anything in the upper right corner plus all of the noble gases are considered non-metals. Then the metalloids are these here touching the stairs. Uh, the other only exceptions, aluminum is considered a metal, not a metalloid. Polonium is considered a metal, not a metalloid. So metals tend to form cations. They have, um, they're easy to steal the electrons. They have low ionization energies. Nonmetals tend to form anions. They have high electron affinities. So they want, they want electrons, and so they steal electrons, and they become, normally become negative anions. So the transition metals tend to have multiple ions that they can make. So they can sometimes make two, three, four different types of ions depending on what electrons are being stolen and shifted around. So if things can differ in metallic quality, what are those metallic qualities? All right, so some of the properties of metals are that they're shiny. So you know that gold and silver are shiny. They conduct heat. Uh, you can you know make a pan out of them. Uh, they conduct electricity. You make wires out of them. They're malleable, which means you can hammer them into sheets. So you can make gold leaf um, and put it on the capital dome. Ductile means you can you can pull it into a wire. Um, they're solids at room temperature. Mercury is the only example that is a liquid at room temperature. And because they have low ionization energies, they form cations. They get their electrons stolen. They become oxidized real easily. Group one are called the alkaline metals, and group two the alkaline earth metals because they tend to turn water basic and basic is alkali. So um, the chemistry of metals tend to make um, bases when it, when it dissolves in water. Nonmetals are the ones on the upper right side of the periodic table, though in the upper right corner, and the properties would, some would be gases, some solids, some uh, liquids, but they're not like metals. So they're poor conductors of heat, poor conductors of electricity. You, don't, you can't hammer them. They can't pull them. They're brittle. They're crumbly. Um, and because they're less, they, have a, they have a high electron affinity, they form ions really easily, anions. So they become negative. When a nonmetal is added to water, it usually makes that water acidic. So carbon dioxide... When you put it in water and make a fizzy Coke, um, part of the acid that you are tasting, the, the, the tartness of that uh, soft drink, is due to the carbonation, and that's why a flat Coke is usually yucky. Um, carbon dioxide gas and sulfur dioxide gas in the air can tend to make acid rain because it mixes with the water to make an acid. Metalloids are halfway between metals and nonmetals. So they have some characteristics of metals, some characteristics of, of nonmetals. And that's one reason why that uh, metalloids are usually used in computer chips. Because a metal conducts electricity, a nonmetal usually doesn't. But if you can um, dope, I guess is the way to say it, if you can dope the a part, like a, if you could scratch, say, a microchip with a little bit of a doping agent, you could make that part very conductive to electricity and everything surrounding it would be an, would be an insulator. So with a little, with a laser guided scraper that's tiny, 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 you can make an integrated chip that uh, 50 years ago would have taken an entire building to fill. So pretty cool.